Hello adventurers, welcome to Weekly Game Night channel. My name is Adam and today I'm taking you on an adventure to the Nova Etas world because I will be doing a playthrough of the newest game by Ludus Magnus Studio Requiem, Requiem Downfall of Magic. This game is launching on Kickstarter in March and I will leave link to campaign in the description of this video. Um, so I will be showing you how to play the game, I will show you and I will tell you a little bit about components and mechanics and if you like this kind of videos and would love to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, thank you very much and if you have any question, please ask them in the comments um, to this video and of course all, all the thumbs up are appreciated as well. well we will start with the prologue and then I will start playing. The oppressive darkness enveloping the forest makes it difficult to see the cultists' tracks. And to make matters worse, the cold, driving rain soaking your clothes threatens to erase them altogether as you trudge forward through the mud. Your thoughts drift back to the summer. It all began when Cardinal Vincenzo Furia founded the Order, a secret special force dedicated to the control of magic. His exploits during the war between Rome and Venice allowed him to deepen his study of the arcane and to formalize a distinction between mages who could perceive and control magic and those he called perceivers who could hear its call and sometimes possessed lesser arcane abilities. It was from the latter that Vincenzo chose most of the Order's recruits. In the aftermath of the clash with Lucifero, who destroyed the Black Rose Lodge and decimated the mages who were part of it, the Order has had much trouble. Recently, word has reached Vincenzo Eats that a young mage, Cosma de Gubernatis, is attempting to bring back his mentor with whom he was in love. Normally, the unlikely plans of a deranged necromancer's apprentice would not concern the Cardinal. But Cosma's mentor happens to be Rebecca, a powerful mage who sacrificed herself for the greater good during the fall of the Lodge and a longtime friend of Vincenzo. Ensure Rebecca's proper rest that Cardinal gathered some of the Order's most gifted individuals, you and set them on Cosma's trail. You discovered that he had taken refuge in Germany, where magic is said to be flourishing again and had allied himself with Totentans, a cult devoted to death. The trail you followed led you into the woods of Wittenberg. A sudden flash of lightning brings you back to the present, illuminating a silhouette fleeing through the trees. Accompanied by the rumble of thunder, you continue your hunt. Be careful, Cosma is not alone. As you've heard from the prologue, we are taken to Germany, where we are following Cosma's footsteps and we are roaming the woods of Wittenberg, or nearby woods of Wittenberg. And well, we can definitely expect something bad to happen. But before I start playing, let me take you on a little guide so I can show you the whole play area and all the components. So over here we have terrain tiles, wood tiles, and as our characters will be moving uh, through these tiles, we're gonna uncover them and keep it, keep it, please keep in mind that uh, in this scenario we have only wood tiles, but in the full game there will be different tiles, uh, uh, city tiles as well. As we're gonna um, uncover tiles and explore them, we'll be drawing one of these two cards. Um, and how it works, I will show you when I will be playing. And also, we're gonna draw chapter-specific cards as well. There is, um, there is equipment deck if we ought to um, meet a marketplace or create a market. We have special space to keep our, to keep our books. So I can, for example, take this book and place it over here. And there is a time tracker because we have only six, uh, six rounds 
two, and let me show you that. So this is the game setup that you're gonna find in this nifty little booklet. That was the prologue. Our quest is find as many tracks as possible. And this is the game setup over here. So we have, um, we have six rounds. And if we uncover at least, uh, discover at least one uh, track, then we're gonna read page seven of this booklet. And if we don't, then page nine of this booklet. So we should stop reading over here. There is some climatic, uh, climatic um, graphic in here as well. So I'm gonna place it over here and continue talking about what we see here. Of course, we have plenty of miniatures. These are super cool miniatures. Um, the scalps are really, um, they are amazing. You know, if you have seen Novetas or Black Rose Wars, expect same quality, different sculpts because Lodus Magnus is always delivering something special when it comes to miniatures. And what else? Of course, we have tons of tokens, different tokens like potions, medications, money, coins called, called talers. We have also damage tokens, dice, plenty of dice, and some other tokens, I, I, if, if we're gonna use them, I will tell them, I will tell you what they are for. And of course, we have our characters. So let me introduce you to um, four brave adventurers that are representing um, the order. Okay, so, well, okay. So this is the dashboard. Let me take these cards off the dashboard for now at least. Okay, so this is the dashboard. On the dashboard, we're gonna place our miniature, uh, our um, character card. On the card, you can see different basic actions that character can perform. And the cost of this action is shown, uh, is, is paid with these uh, action tokens. So we're gonna move them, uh, turn them around like this. And each character has some spe specific skill and that's not all, because we are starting on the second level. So let me put this down because it's not so easy to show, but we are starting on the second level because I wanted to show you some special skills. On the first level, you don't get any skill card, but as the game progresses, you will gain levels. And for example, on second level, you have two, uh, two action coins of that kind, two actual action, uh, action tokens actually of that kind. We have, uh, we have limit of one skill card, limit of one equipment card. This is our maximum health and focus. But as we progress, for example, level five, you can compare it. Wow, you get uh, more of everything basically. So we are starting on level two. Let me put that aside. Mm -mm. Level two and and we have a special skill unlocked. Melchiora will be able to, um, to create Cesare, which is his companion, a dog. We're gonna see how it works later on. Um, we get bunch of uh, bunch of exploration tokens. Two dice for each of the characters. And that's it. So each of the characters has different class and what is cool about this game is that we get, basically everything is different because we get different deck, uh, deck experience deck. When you level up, you get different, um, different tokens or you know, different skills. Um, we have, of course, every, every class has different, uh, every class has different skills. Different dice, even dice are different. So the result on the dice on the dice are a little bit different, um, and so and each character is played different as well. So we have like some kind of uh, more helping characters, and of course we have some heavy hitters or tanks. So we're gonna see how it works. We have two dice for our companion, fate die, and whew, I think that's it. I think we can start as the game will unfold. I'm gonna tell you, <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the game mechanics. What you need to know for now is that, <clears throat> is that we are in the beginning of the tour, we, we would restore our card, but that's not happening. Now we get to the action phase because 
the whole turn is basically uh, spread into three phases. So in the beginning of the turn, we're gonna um, restore our cards and tokens. In the action phase, we're gonna perform actions and end of the turn, there will be some opportunity attack from enemies and um, and effects that happen that happens at the that happen at the end of the round. Okay, uh, one thing I should mention probably is that because we you, you see plenty of miniatures over here, but where are the how are the enemies coming into play? Well, as we're gonna explore the woods, we're gonna draw some cards, and in this cards deck we have um, reference to stories, we have uh, events, we have fate cards, and we have enemies. So let's start. Without further ado, let's start the adventure. So <clears throat> maybe. Maybe we can first we can move um, Valerio. So Valerio can either walk or run. If you walk, you simply go to a nearby tile. But if you run, uh, it, it 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 of course costs you more. But you can um, you can move through two tiles, up to two tiles actually. Okay. So, but I will just I will just move. I will just move, so walk, and let's uncover that tile. Oh, more woods, okay. So that was my first action. There is no specific turn order, so I can activate one action of one character, uh, other action of other character. So, and, and this is what this game is all about, because you want to find some synergy between characters and their skills, because when you're gonna fight, some characters can help you to reroll your dice. You're gonna see that probably. So, um, there is plenty of there is plenty of uh, things that might happen in between interactions in between characters. Okay, so that was Valerio first move. Now let's do explore action. Explore cost is one star or one um, or one sun. So I will pick sun symbol to do explore, and when I do that, I put level one token that character level one token on the tile, and then I get to draw from a specific deck, a card from a specific de deck that is connected to that tile. In this specific scenario, uh, all the tiles are connected to these two decks. Okay, so what we've got here? Oh, we have, uh, we have enemy, weird crow. So let's do some card anatomy over uh, right now. So it's pretty simple. This is the health of the enemy. This is the value of a sneak attack. If I perform a sneak attack, that's the value, I, that's the damage value I will inflict. And this is opportunity attack, opportunity attack. So whenever I try to move out of the tile with the enemy or at the end of the turn, that enemy will perform opportunity attack by rolling this fate die and wanting this symbol, triangle symbol. There are, I believe, two of these on this die. Okay. And this is the reward when you defeat the enemy. And each enemy has a uh, special trait. Maybe not each of them, but most of them. You can see a little list of traits over here. That one is frenzied. So uh, that enemy will perform opportunity attack right now because I activated that enemy. So let me place this enemy card over here. There is a symbol we are looking for these three crystals and we're gonna place it over here so let's do opportunity opportunity attack mm, i rolled three it doesn't matter because i'm looking for the symbol it's not a triangle so we are all good but now it's time it's time to do some damage i only need to do one so combat is also pretty straightforward because this is a fast game so this is always the enemy dice set, and this is uh, our character dice. And we're gonna roll them and compare white with white and uh, black with black, looking for either swords or shield symbols. And this symbol is a focus, and focus allows us to uh, do some more additional actions. So, let's roll it. Okay, so, oh, that went pretty well. 
So two misses for my enemy and I get more swords than this enemy and I have of course more shields. Normally, if I would have any of the um, any of the uh, of, of of my focus used, I would take some. Uh, I would choose result with the focus because on these two dice I can pick a result. But my focus is full right now, so I simply inflict one damage every time I have more swords than my, than my enemy. Uh, I inflict one damage, and it works the same for the enemy. If the enemy would have like, for example, two swords and I would only have, oh, okay, miss, then it would also inflict me one damage. And that's it. The combat is that simple. But of course, you can influent, uh, influent, uh, influence the dice result. Um, okay, so I've dealt one damage. This guy is gone. So first one is off the board and that card is placed over here and I get a reward. Reward was three talers. Okay, good start, Valerio. And that leaves me with one action, with one action um, token, mm -hmm. which I won't use right now. So now let's focus on Beatrice, Beatrice. So Beatrice is kind of a, kind of a character at least uh, I have played this game once, so she was more of a helping character and she is looking like that nun from that horror movie Conjuring or something. Um, disturbing, disturbing. And why does she need candles on her head? We are in the woods, it's raining. Ah, doesn't matter. Okay, so Beatrice is walking uh, with the use of one star and now she will also perform exploration and her exploration is one sun symbol. So let's do that. When she explores, we simply exchange the exploration token and we can explore up to two times each, um, each tile up to two times. And when we explore for the second time, then we draw from the second deck that is prepared over here. And what we've got, oh, Archabuser, ooh, and as you can see, these are his stats, and he has a trait called Sadistic, which means I cannot move out of that tile until he's defeated. So, Archabuser, two crystals come here. Okay, another enemy. He's a little bit tougher. Can Beatrice somehow deal with that dude? Let me check. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I mean, she can fight. Mm, she can fight, but we're gonna wait with that. We're gonna wait with that because I want Valerio to fight first. So let's perform other fight action. So these are the dice. This is our result. Okay, so it didn't went that good this time. Uh, yeah. So I deal one damage to, oh, Archibuser should be placed here. I deal one damage and that dude is dealing the one damage as well. Can I somehow manipulate the final result? Mm -hmm. Not really. Oh, actually, with use of battery skill, I can spend two focus. Let me show you that. So this is her special skill. I can spend two focus to perform quick action and character on my tile can reroll their black or white dice. This is how she is helping. So let's do that. So I will reroll my white die. Let's see. Mm. Mm, it's not better. So I will lose my entire focus to reroll another dice. Oh, okay. It seems I was, it was meant to be. I was ought to hit by this, it's okay. So I will lose one health. Now Beatrice can come into action. Ah, use your candles, baby. Um, so we're gonna use moon symbol. 
that's the cost of her fight action. As you can see, I will, I will exchange the dice because these are her dice. And now she will fight. Okay. She will fight. So let's compare the symbols. Okay, so two misses for him, but she has this really nifty ability that is saying, roll, uh, roll your fate die. If you get if you get square or circle, which I did, add one sword to your black die. Okay, so that is exhausted. I'm adding one sword to my result. So right now I'm inflicting second damage. And that dude is gone. Another another bites the dust. And the reward is one medic uh, one potion. Okay, we have plenty of potions to choose from. So let me show you that. <coughs> okay. We have these four potions to choose from. Basically, Master Brew is adding you two swords to your result, attack result, stone skin to two shields to your defense. Falling Grace allows you to perform sling action, which is a special action. If available, you can move without opportunity attack from the enemy. And Vengetonic adds another um, one damage to your sneak attack. So I think I will choose. Uh, I will choose. Let's choose Master Brew. Okay, Master Brew. And I'm gonna place place it on her player dashboard. Okay. Now she's left with one star symbol. She can walk. Oh, let's get rid of that. She can walk, but I don't know if I want to do that yet. Let's let's move other characters. Melchiore, okay. Melchiore. So he's moving over here. And the cost of his walk is one sun, one sun. Okay, he's moving over here. Now that character will perform exploration and the cost is either sun or star, but my fight is also either one star or two suns. So I want to use sun for exploration. You know, this is, this is where this game is getting interesting, because as you play, you get more and more options. Um, you, you will get more tokens when you level up, of course. Uh, and then you can think how, what is the best way to, uh, to um, for, uh, what's the best way to achieve the best outcome. And as we are playing against the clock, yeah, you will see that, uh, that this is really important, how you perform reactions and how you use your abilities. Okay, so. Melchiora, level one, and we get another weird crow, which is what is also interesting. That, for example, this one is not frenzied, so they have uh, even though the miniature is the same, the name of the card is the same. We get different rewards, different stats, and different traits of the enemies. So this is a weird crow, and this is one that we're gonna look for. That one, okay. Also one health, so that should be easy. So that should be easy. Mm. Do I want to attack? No, I want to do something else. I will do so-called exploit actions. So exploit actions are special actions that when, when you are using uh, skill cards, uh, th this is one of the examples, but also equipment and a couple of other things that you might do when the game allows you uh, to, oh, excuse me, it's not exploit, it's utilize, utilize action. So basically when you're using cards, you are, or potions, uh, you are, or medications, you are using utilize. It's a kind of a free action. So we're gonna use utilize and create Cesare. So we're gonna, we're gonna pay to focus. We're gonna pay to focus and create Cesare on our tile. So let's take the companion, small companion deck. So we have this dude. And it belongs to Melchiore. And Cesare has this um, special, special uh, tokens. It's like a simplified action. He can attack twice or move once. And it has to help, uh, to help. And a special, and a special ability as well. So this is, I'm gonna place that card over here and take our mighty dog token here as well. And 
why not let's attack let's attack with uh, with our companion so to see to see um, if he can inflict uh, if it can inflict any damage mm -mm -mm. so I'm gonna need one move token for him and two combat tokens this is our combat dog K9 incoming so let's see let's see uh, okay he has this oh three swords that's nice so as you can see one damage is dealt by our companion that's the cost one damage is dealt by our companion okay but it also gets one damage can i somehow uh, no i can't okay never mind never mind so this uh, this weird crow is off the board look how fast it goes and you get two coins you get two coins mm, 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 mm. okay that's it uh, i will use special action of melchiora so i can spend two focus to explore more and I'm doing that to show you that when you explore for the second time, I mean when there is your exploration token in here, you're gonna simply turn it around, but you need to perform two uh, explore actions to get to that card. When you when you were um, exploring for the second time, but other player token was there, you only need to spend one action. But if it's yours token, you need to spend two actions. So overall, like three actions if it's only your tokens. So I'm gonna do that and explore with a star symbol for the second time to get me a fate. Okay, a new card. So let me show it to you. Turning in the direction of a sudden noise, you stumble over a large fallen branch on the path which breaks under your weight. So we're gonna roll, we're gonna roll Fate uh, Dime and the symbol is square or diamond, whatever. We're gonna exhaust one, uh, one focus. We don't have that, so that's it. We were lucky. Uh, oh no, we're gonna exhaust one action token, excuse me. So we weren't lucky. Okay, so that's it for Melchiore and that, um, that round. Mm -hmm. And we are left with Agnes. So if Agnes is, if Agnes is, if this tile is explored, this one is explored, she can actually explore the tile she's on. But I don't necessarily want to do that. So let's do something else. I will move her twice. I will move her twice. And, 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 or even here, or even here. And Agnes will pay two action symbols. And mm -mm -mm, she will explore with her third action symbol, which kind of a left, uh, left, you know, I'm left on uh, here mm, vulnerable because so let's let's place this token. I'm gonna draw a card. If it's an enemy, I cannot do any harm. Oh, it's an event. So a shiver runs down your spine as you hear a rustling sound. Was it the rain that made that bash move? Okay, so something is moving in the bashes, and this event takes us to storybook excerpt 19. Okay, and this is where it gets interesting. I will read that first. Restless. You try to slow your heartbeat and sharpen your senses to make sure it was not merely suggestion. Soon after, however, all your doubts disappear when a second bash farther away moves. Okay, so we can we can cautiously walk away or move closer to check. Of course we're gonna move closer to check. And this is in interesting because the first time I was playing, I got the idea that I haven't even seen half of the book half of the book, um, which is really cool because it's not like I haven't seen part of the story, that's one thing, but I also haven't seen some of the enemies, some of the miniatures on board. So yeah, I think replayability is definitely in here. So let's read 33. Mm -mm -mm -mm. With the sound of rain ringing in your ears, you advance a few steps. 
A few fathoms away, you bend on your knees and consider what to do. Near you, on the ground, is a stone size of your fist. Ok, I can throw the stone at the bush, or you reach the bush. Um, I'm Agnes, she's, she's like, she has a great big sword, so yeah, you reach the bush. Number three. Uh. Ok, number three. The resounding snap of a branch under your boot reveals your presence. A child's head jumps out of the bush, followed by the body of a large, oh, unworldly crow. But your guard is already up. Activate card number four. Okay, so <laughs> why was the head uh, of the child uh, over there and then followed by this whole body of a crow? I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to show you just uh, just now. Uh, so first things first, uh, I should activate card number four. So this is a special chapter one deck. I'm taking card number four and reveal it. And it's an enemy. But this lurking crow, as you can see, the child faces over here. It reminds me kind of Kingdom Dead Monster stuff, um, like gore stuff. Okay. 2 to 1 statistics and it's Lidl and sadistic. So Lidl means that uh, during a fight uh, draws uh, on the swords dice uh, for this enemy, white dice of this enemy. Uh, if there is a tie, it's considered in favor, it's resolved in favor of this enemy. Mm, and a special prize is the unknown token that you're gonna draw from here. Okay, so two to one. Okay, and it has sadistic as well, so I cannot move out. So first things first, let me take the crow and place it over here. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't perform any opportunity attack. I'm basically, without any actions, so I will move with Beatrice using a star symbol over here, over here, and now we get to the end of the round. So, at the end of the round, let's start with performing opportunity attack by this enemy. So, it performs opportunity attack against two of the characters, so Agnes first, miss, we need triangles, and it's also a miss, so we are good. Woo. Lucky, or lucky rather. Okay, so uh, that was that was first thing that you do at the end of the round. Next, we gonna um, we gonna um, trigger end of the round uh, effects, which we don't have. And finally, we can remove a time token. Five rounds left. Five rounds left. We're gonna remove a time token and in the beginning of the round we're gonna restore our tokens first. So let me just do that. <laughs> and cards, exhausted cards as well. We, we, we had only one skill that was exhausted as well. And whew, and that's it, that's it, dear, dear adventurers. Mm, let me just check if I didn't miss anything. Uh, 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 effects at the beginning of the round, which we don't have. Oh, and this token for our Cesare, brave companion. Okay, okay. So that's, that's it, that's it. And now we get more rounds. So let's start with the attack. Let's deal with this crow. So fight Agnes. Let, let me show you what she can do with some nasty enemies, but maybe she has a sneak attack. Uh, oh yeah, she does. What's the sneak? Okay, so sneak attack value is two. Health of that dude is also two. So me, instead of risking combat, I will simply use two moon tokens, that's her special ability, and perform a sneak attack against the enemy. So bye bye, crow. I lost two tokens, but um, that dude is gone. And oh, let me do some space. Okay. 
that dude is gone and we get to draw one special prize which is medication okay the which is medication agnes gets medication fair enough i can use it to heal one damage or one wound so that was that and now beatrice now beatrice can perform explore action with her sun maybe with her star symbol yeah with her star symbol so let me exchange that token into level 2 token and uh, and let's draw a card hmm guess what archebuser archebuser no sneak attack one health he's enraged crazed and little and what what does it actually mean that uh, when he performs uh, opportunity attack also his uh, the diamond symbols counts as hits and he's crazed so whenever he is activated uh, oh no okay so he performs a little attack when you enter the space he is um, he's on so that's him but i think we're gonna deal with him because agnes will spend her final final uh, token spend her final token and i hope for some nice combo to show you so let's do that dice roll comparing the dice so i defended against him and he didn't defend against me and Agnes has a special skill that um, is over here. Condition is you inflicted a damage to an enemy with a fight action, with a fight action, no, not, not sneak attack. Then I get to uh, I get to exhaust that card, and I get to restore one action token. How cool is that? That dude is gone, and we get to draw another. Price. and this time is a it's a stone skin potion yeah we are getting buffed okay and I still get one more uh, one more action token but uh, but let's do it like that so uh, our mighty batteries will walk over here using her star symbol symbol so let's see that more woods guess what more woods and she will perform explore action with her star symbol with her sun symbol mm -hmm. yep so let's place a token here and we got an event in the eerie silence of a brief lull in the downpour, the echo of a few dull thumps draws your attention. <laughs> and we get to read excerpt 25. Let's see excerpt 25. What is that? What is happening in that woods? Okay. You faint light of a torch filters uncertainly into the thick darkness. You get just close enough to discern someone or something digging a white hole in the ground. You approach discreetly, you reveal your presence. No way, I approach discreetly. Let's see that. Number five. Number five. You leave the path and get even closer to the figure until you can clearly see it is a man. What drives him to dig a grave on this nightmarish night? Okay, you catch him by surprise, you reveal your presence. Let's catch him by surprise. You sneak forward when suddenly the flutter of a bird's wings in flight makes you turn around. You lose sight of a man for a few moments, but the distraction is fatal. You wake up some time later in the hall in the freezing rain with a painful bruise on your temple and empty pockets. If you can exhaust, exhaust one symbol, I can, one action token I mean, I can, then discard all your cash and your potions. Oh, that wasn't nice. Okay, so that was the event. I can't do anything about that. Well, what can I tell you? Mm, I risked. 
maybe not risk, maybe I risk because I don't know what was in the other part of that story if I would reveal my presence, maybe I would be able to fight that man, I don't know. Anyway, Agnes is moving over here with her last action token and it gets us to our three characters or two characters and a companion. So, let's move with Melchiore. Melchiore will move even over here, I think. Yeah, even over here. So let's reveal that tile. Oh, there is some building on the tile. Hmm, nice. Which doesn't matter because the story and the cards that you are gonna that you are going to reveal tells us what, what is actually in the woods. Um, so that was first action and walk is one sun. Second action will be explore. And I want to use Sun as well to explore that. So let's explore some more. Another Archibizer. This one is only lethal, but it has uh, he has two health, sneak attack is two, and opportunity attack is one. So Mr. Archibizer, let me take you over here. But what we have our friendly dog for we're gonna spend one movement get over here and perform attack with our cesare oh. so let's see how it goes okay oh not so good this time because i didn't inflict any damage and he inflicted one damage. Okay, so Cesare is gone. Good thing is, I can create him again. I can create him again. Mm, but he has a special ability. When Cesare is defeated, roll your fate die, which I will. If you get... Okay, if I get <laughs> triangle, I would suffer one damage. Okay, so it's a trade-off. Okay, but not this time. I will leave it over. I will leave that, our uh, poor dog, over here. Mm and hmm, take off the token okay so let's go back to melchiora uh, what he can do what he can do i think i will simply attack i will simply attack maybe i i have more luck this time so fight is one action okay i don't see good results so it's like that and like that <laughs> so I will simply pick one focus to replenish my focus. Can I somehow... I can't, okay. And I'm dealt one damage. Hmm, not nice. I will try again. I'm stubborn. Oh, <laughs> this time it's better. Because I got three swords against two shields. So I inflicted one damage. I also get one damage, but also two focus. I should pay with that. Okay. What are friends for? So Valerio is walking twice. And Valerio is also attacking. Uh, Valerio is also attacking this arc abuser. Uh, did I pay it correctly? Yes, I did use a star symbol to attack. And I need... I need a single hit, basically. Oh wait, it was there, yeah, I used correct dice, okay. So, as you can see, this Archibuser managed to inflict so, some nice damage, but, okay, so I got one damage, but I inflicted uh, one damage as well, which is enough. Uh, can I replenish my focus? No, I can't, so okay. And let's take it off. I got one special gift from our Arc abuser, which is a medication. Medication is always useful. Okay, I'm gonna place it over here. So I'm left with one action. Oh, you go here. I'm left with one action. And 
my final action. We didn't move the story forward much, did we? I can explore, that's kind of a risky, because Melchior is on the edge. If I draw an... Uh, uh, let's have some fun. So, I will explore. I will explore. So, let me place my token over here. And... Oh, I've drawn event. A thick fog weighs down this area of the forest, as if glued to everything it touches. And I'm get, I get to read nine. So let's see. Nine. Okay. Even the rain struggles to find its way through the layer of fog that surrounds you. The birch tree trunks follow another so closely that you begin to think you have lost your way. Suddenly, you seem to hear human voices. You stay where you are and listen. You approach the voices. Hmm. I will approach the voices. 23. The closer you get, the more words you can make out. A male voice insists insist insist on the need to obey orders. A second man, mon more nervous, wants to leave as soon as possible and claims he is not afraid to pull the trigger if forced. You keep your distance and listen as the situation develops. Reach 2. You get even closer to understand. I will get even closer to understand. 18. <clears throat> the, shil the silhouettes of two men are outlined in the fog. You are a witness of an act of insubordination. A simple soldier points his arquebus at his superior officer and shouts that he wants to get out of there. When the officer, impatient, tries to attack him, the soldier fires a fatal, a fatal shot. The disjointed screams of the creatures that haunt the forest quickly approach, drawn by the explosion. The man flees into the mist, but the sound of his flight are abruptly cut short. So... I can spend conditions, spend one action token, you search for the body of the soldier, you check the corpse of the officer. Hmm. Can I spend... I cannot spend more. Oh, so I need to check the corpse of the officer. Oh, I wanted to follow the soldier. Okay. You find a letter on the body with the soldier orders. It is imperative to locate Lieutenant Albrecht's party. They were tasked to set up an outpost in the forest to the northwest but have not reported for days. Highest priority. Okay, so some soldiers went <coughs> missing and those who followed went missing as well. Activate six. Activate card number six. What can it be? Is it something good or something bad? Uh, rescue mission. Okay. Okay. So activate six. So there is a rescue mission on that tile, we're gonna place it over here. We need to exhaust uh, one action token or pay three focus, and then we get to read 26 and discard this card. But we can't do anything else right now because we are out of action tokens. So other round is gone, other round is gone, and we still haven't found a single track, a single clue. But a lot is happening in that forest, as you can see. So, first things first, no, uh, no enemies on the board, so no opportunity attack, no end uh, of the action, end of the action, end of the turn actions. So, we're gonna simply... We're gonna simply refresh all the elements that can be refreshed. And we're gonna move forward, deeper into the woods, to find out about some, you know, nasty creatures that are roaming these lands, or whatever is hiding out there. <laughs> so, first, Beatrice, you go, oh, we have to explore that second time. Okay, Agnes, you go, girl. Mm. We will explore that tile for the second time and we're gonna draw a fate a card. A glimmer of moonlight filters through the clouds, illuminating a small clearing. Instinctively, you feel that this is a safe place. So, safe place. I don't need anything to be honest. Okay, get, oh, get to medication. That is good because uh, there is a special donation action 
which I'm gonna perform right now. And with the donation action, I can simply give any amount of talents, potions, or medications, or even discovery cards without the personal symbol to any player on the same tile, any character on the same tile. So I will simply give uh, her um, one medication. And now we can move forward. So first, Beatrice will walk and explore that tile. Uh, and explore that tile, yeah. I said it, <laughs> I said it, so let's do some exploration right now. Again, fate. You find yourself prey to a male, male storm of black feathers and long claws. You react quickly, but the confrontation puts you to the test. Okay, the test is roll a fate die, triangle, discard one medication. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that was not, not nice, <laughs> that's nice. Okay, mm. so I lost my medication. Well, pity. Agnes will follow Beatrice's steps to get there. And I'm thinking, should I explore? Hmm, I can only explore. Hmm. Okay, so let's explore with... Uh, with Agnes' uh, skill. And draw that card. Guess what? Another arc abuser! The forest is swarming with those dudes. So he's frenzied. He's frenzied. Um, so that's a, that's a new trait. So let me take that miniature over here. Frenzied means that he's performing opportunity attack. Uh, against the model that activated them. So it's a miss, at least with these opportunity attacks, I'm lucky. So that's Archibuzer. I cannot hit him with the use of Agnes. I can only fight, but so Beatrice, sister Beatrice will, will fight. When she was a young nun, she was pretty good at boxing. So I reckon she will deal with that dude. Oh, his health is too, so she won't, but yeah, whatever. Mm -mm -mm. So let's see. So let's see. Okay. So I defended myself and gained one focus from that die. Uh, it's a miss, but I can still perform something because whenever I perform a fight action, I can roll a fate die, which I will. And if I got, uh, oh, I got a triangle, so it's a miss. No, so no. Swords added here, and mm -mm -mm. no, I can't do nothing more. So I'll simply get another, uh, another focus. Okay, I have one star left. I would be able to walk away from this, and I will, and I will. And that dude will perform a uh, opportunity attack against me. Value is one. Finally, they managed to do that. So one damage is dealt. I'm going over here. Uh, I'm going over here. And that's it. That's it. Oh, but she can perform a slink, but whenever another character discards a fate card. Okay, so that wasn't the case. We are left with Valerio and Melchiora, so let's see what they can do. <laughs> we have some rescue mission on on map. I can simply exhaust, um, pay with three focus. I will pay with three focus to get that mission done. So we're gonna read excerpt 26, site mission. You find, you find an abandoned camp, a formation of small tents pitched around a larger one. Judging by the condition of the camp, those who occupied it uh, thought they would return soon. Clearly, this was not the case. Guess what happened? You expect the smaller tent, you enter the largest tent. Hmm. Largest tent. Let's loot <laughs> or something. The tent is well organized and has held up, held up well in the downpour. You find a well-worn notebook that belonged to Klaus Albrecht, 
a lieutenant in the Wittenberg militia. You flip through the crumpled, the crumpled pages to the last entry, November 28. We must find out what is going on in this forest. Today we will search the cave near the witch tree. Some woodsmen claim that strange presence lurk there. Activate card number 7. Finally, we are doing something. Strange, pre strange presence. So, uh, discard, discard. And activate, what was that? Activate 7. Activate 7. So, oh. We found a cave. Mm -hmm. So it seems like we're gonna stay here a little. So now I will simply exhaust one of, of the Valerius symbols. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I will get to read 28. 28, 28. The cave. Okay, so let's see what is that. At least I'm ready this time. A gruesome sight emerges from the fog. The shredded corpses of some soldiers are scattered near the mouth of a cave. Blood mixed with mud. Ew, gory. Okay, so for two focus, you can check the surroundings and read 32 or we approach the cave. Of course, I'm gonna pay two focus. If there is a cause, there is a reward or at least some kind of badass enemy. Okay, you follow a trail of blood to a soldier lying on the ground a short distance away. Gasping, but still alive, his face is disfigured by a claw and a deep wound in his stomach. When he sees, he, uh, when he sees you, he lifts, his, uh, he lifts an arm to clasp your shoulder and tries to say something, but life leaves him before he can utter a word. You make the sign of the cross and return to the cave. Rest in peace, dude. Get one, um, get one equipment card, then read eight. Okay, so we're gonna simply get one equipment card. Uh, that was performed by Melchiore. So we've got ourselves a brick. Short interruption. So equipment card have cubes on it. This is how many times you can use it. This is the price if you would buy it on the market. Uh, in the market, um, this is condition. We need simply need to remove one cube when we are using equipment. We're gonna exhaust it for the for uh, one round, and then with this particular brick, we can perform a sneak attack. Imagine that that brick thrown at Wild Crow's head. That's some sneak attack, right? So I'm gonna place it over here and get two cubes. Boom! And now we're gonna get to read eight. <laughs> You take a few steps towards the entrance <coughs> of the cave. The stench of blood and decay grows stronger. From the dark depths of the cave, a huge abomination emerges. A hideous union between a human and a giant crow, dragging a huge, terrifying great sword behind it. The empty hollows of its raven eyes stare at you for a few moments. Then the creature opens its great beak wide and lets out a terrifying scream, revealing a human face trapped in its jaws. Like Kingdom Dead Monster. <laughs> Uh, the vibe, the vibe of that particular creature, of course. Activate eight and nine. Okay, so first things first, eight and nine. But before I do, let me show you the creature I've met. So that's the creature I've met. Really cool miniature. And what I can tell you that when I was playing that game for the first time, I have not even uh, I have not even made to this part of this little booklet. So I have not seen that creature, not read the story. So this is a living proof that when I play a game, I get to read different stories. And there were stories that I have uh, experienced before that I have not seen today, or I have chosen different options. So that's really cool. That's really really cool. So let's place that over here. Discard that and we're gonna activate 8 and 9. And 8, 9, my friends. <clears throat> 8 and 9. So, let me show it to you. So, hunted. Discard, discard at the next upkeep. Uh, okay. And we get Abomination Enemy. The enemy ignores all damage from sources other than the owner of Hunted. Um, card or one of their companions. He's enraged, crazed, little. He has a special uh, price. Three, two, one. Let's go. 
Let's go. Mm -mm -mm. I think I dealt with that Archibuser, didn't I? Oh, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. We, we just drove him. Okay. So, Hunted is Melchiore. And only he can inflict uh, he can inflict the damage, which is kind of a uh, sad because he's not <clears throat> the best hitter. But discard discard at the next upkeep, so it's only for the one round. Only for the one round. I assume. Okay, he's enraged. Uh, okay, he's more dangerous. He's also crazed. Mm -hmm. So when I enter the tile he's on, uh, or it's on, um, it will perform opportunity attack. Mm -hmm. I cannot do much, to be honest. I mean, I will fight, of course. Oh, Melchiore has only one health. God damn it. Anyway, I need to perform fight action and hope Oh, I can also perform a sneak attack. Wait a second, wait a second. Of course I will perform a sneak attack because sneak attack value of that abomination is two. Yes, sir. So what do I need to do? I need to take uh, one of these cubes of the card and simply perform a sneak attack. There is no dice rolling. Uh, contrary to the enemies, we don't roll dice. And how, how mm, convenient that I've managed to deal two damage, and now I will use star action um, symbol to try to deal final damage. Or wait a second, just to wait a second, because <clears throat> I can create a companion. Okay, I didn't find a. Uh, it was a short break. I didn't find anything in the rule book. If I cannot. Uh, there is no, not a word if I can or cannot uh, create like another instance of Cesare. So I will. So I will. This is a skill after all. So I will simply pay any token. Cesare is here. Cesare is here. I assume it will be attacked because he it enters mm, the tile with abomination. So opportunity attack from abomination will happen nonetheless because that abomination is crazed exactly and it's a special abomination so also diamond results are a hit so sorry cesare but it was a hit no worries though because now cesare will prove his its worth <laughs> so I'm using attack action and yeah it kind of did <laughs> because that that might be interesting because Cesare is down also abomination is down so we will we will read chapter six in a second there but when Cesare is down I need to roll a die so let's roll a die Okay, it's diamond, so we are good. It's interesting because if Cesare would be down, if I would roll a triangle, um, then, I mean, it is down, but then, uh, then it would inflict one damage to Melchiore, and then Melchiore would be down as well, but it wasn't the case. So let me take off, let me take it off the board. Mm, let's read six. Let's read six. The hideous monster collapses to the ground lifeless. Its feathers begins, begin to melt, and within minutes, all that remains of its body is a pile of sharp bones covered in slimy black pitch. You wonder what blasphemous spell could have brought such a creature into the world. Uh, we have two choices. You pull off the skull, but I need to pay with one life, which I don't have. You enter the cave. Okay, I need to enter the cave because I cannot pay with life. Mm -mm -mm. Unfortunately. Okay. 29. Inside the cave, you return sacks filled with black powder derived from a bizarre mineral unknown to you. You carefully examine the footprint in the mug, 
There are those of the soldier boots, now almost obliterated, and those of the abomination you killed. Fresh from the day, but you managed to locate another set of footprints that go from the cave entrance to the sacks of dust, and then back into the forest undisturbed. You are on the right track. Finally, we get one track. That's cool, that's cool. So, we are getting somewhere. We are getting somewhere. Mm, we found out some soldiers, some abomination that shouldn't be here and here, I mean in this world. So it's getting interesting. Mm -mm -mm. It's getting interesting. <clears throat> hmm, what else can I do? So, Valerio is still there. Valerio is still there. I will probably walk over here. Mm hmm I would gladly explore. Before I walked, I donate uh, medication to Melchior and he uses it for one health. Mm hmm Now, can I explore? I can explore. Valerio. It's risky, but yeah, let's do it. Let's explore. Time is running up. Another arc abuser, so let me get rid of that, by the way. Mm -hmm. Other arc abuser, 2 to 1. Uh, 2 to 1. Oh, that, that dude. Mm -hmm. Narraged and crazed. Okay, so when I will enter, he will perform opportunity attack. Which I will, Valerio, get over here. Opportunity attack. And also diamonds count, so... Oh, I have only one health. <laughs> Agnes, where are you? If I stay here, he might kill me. If I go, he might kill me, so let's fight. Let's fight. Uh, so what's the result? No damage, no damage. It's a draw, let's say. So let's roll again. Oops. Another fight action. Okay, now it's better. I get two focus. Actually, three focus. And I deal one damage not the best case not the best case scenario but you know it is what it is mm -hmm. and this concludes a third round so now opportunity attack from that dude and that dude so let's start off with um, that archibuser he has Frenzied, uh, so it doesn't matter. Triangles counts. Agnes, one health left. That dude performs opportunity attack. He can knock down, no, oh, only one, only Valerio. So let's perform opportunity attack against Valerio. Triangle, that happened. Valerio is knocked down. Another opportunity attack. Melchiore, he has this threat called Enraged, if I remember correctly. Yep, that's right. So Melchior loses uh, one health. And... <laughs> and now. And now. Uh, I removed time, uh, time token. Three rounds left. Let's... Let's refresh all the tokens, all the cards, and I will show you how to uh, <laughs> how to get back to action when you are knocked down. Uh, Valerio, I need to spend three tokens, which I will, of course. One, two, three. I get half of my health rounded up, so I get two health. Then I'm back to action, and that's it we can start another round of the game. Okay, another round. Another round. So, let's swiftly deal with this Archibuser over there. Uh, <laughs> so, I will use my own medication. Next, 
I will perform a fight action. So let's see how it goes. Fight action. <laughs> oh, ooh, ooh. I don't want that. Uh, is he little? No, he's not. So I will use stone uh, stone skin to add two shields to my um, result. So it's a draw in a way. So let's try again. Come on, Agnes. Now we're talking. So he inflicted one damage and I inflicted one damage. Let's try for the end. I use my special ability to restore one of my token. tokens. Okay. Actually, now I can... Hmm. So I will use her special ability to perform a sneak attack on that dude because his sneak value is one and I need one damage. So I will use both of these symbols to deal one final damage. And that dude is gone. Let's see what is the reward. So, oh, the reward is a new one. We get an equipment card. So, uh, let me hide it somewhere over there. So we get a random equipment card, which is Jinx Tiara. Whenever I get X, uh, I take off one of the cubes from that uh, equipment and I can reroll one, one or both of my uh, black or white dice. Oh, I can roll one of both enemy dice. Okay, cool. Still cool. Three cubes. Oh, that was also, that should be also refreshed. Three cubes. Okay. So, mm -mm -mm. so you are gone. Beatrice, are you exploring on your own? Seems a bit risky. I will think about that, but first let me deal with that dude. So, <laughs> actually Valerio, Valerio, now it's your turn to shine. So he will fight, yeah, star symbol. He will fight, I need one damage. I need one damage. I managed to deal. I've managed to deal one damage and but I also got one. So, boom, boom and boom boom. So, reward for that guy is one potion and I will choose stone skin since like defense is important in that game. Well, what else we can do? Beatrice, let's explore. Let's explore with her, mm, maybe, <laughs> star symbol. So, exploration, level one. Let's see what's there. What's hiding in there? Fate. All around you, horrible creatures move through the trees, kept at bay only by the light of the torch. The looming danger keeps you in a constant state of fear. <laughs> Roll a dice. Three. Uh, not three. Uh, diamond. It means lose two. Focus. Okay. Not nice. But I could only lose focus with that card. So, shall she explore more? Yes, she shall. Uh, so I need two exploration actions, so I need sun symbol and star symbol to do that. And I will. And we get an event. Catch the glow of a lantern in the forest, a cultist. Unwilling to let them escape, you run through the mud to catch up and prepare for a showdown. Activate card number 10. Card number 10. Oh. Ooh, isolated cultist. I like the sound of that. So, what do you have, dude? Five to one. Mmm, nice. At the end of the turn, this enemy places themselves on an adjacent tile without a character or companion within it, if available. So he's escaping, basically. We are chasing. 
he's frenzied, he, he's frenzied, frenzied, enraged and crazed. Mm. So first opportunity attack against Beatrice. Oh, it's a miss, it's a miss, it was this one, it's a miss, it's a miss. Okay, oh, I made a little mess. Mm -hmm. I made a little mess, so it's a miss. Uh, and... And, and, and... Well, let's place him over here. And we need that cultist miniature to be placed here. Can Beatrice attack? Yes, she can, and she... Will she do that? Will she do that? Oh, that should be actually... Oh, that should be like that. That, should, that card should be refreshed. And yes, she will attack. She will attack because she is so strong. And she has a special skills or something. So, yeah, she dealt damage and gained one focus, actually two focus, and she was dealt one damage as well. So, one damage to, to cultist. Can she somehow... Can she somehow... Uh -uh. Reroll? No, she can't. She can't get a better result. She can attack better, but still. Damage was dealt, damage was dealt, and that's it. And that's it. Okay, so that's that. Uh, who else? Melchiora, of course. Melchiora, of course. And he can... He can... Explore. That's quite straightforward. So, no, maybe first. Create a companion. Create a companion. So, Cesare, you are back into action. I need you, good boy. Mm, 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 mm. With that, now explore with Star. Event. The hypnotic murmur of the rain is broken by men's screams. So, let's see that. Read 27. 27, I'm curious. You reach the edge of a clearing from behind, uh, from behind, from behind an oak tree. You see a man trudging through the mud, desperately shouting, "Sarah, Sarah!" Doesn't he realize that all he, that all this racket will attract the attention of the creatures that haunt the forest? You keep a safe distance. You approach him and order him to stop. So I will approach him. Fourteen. The man is visibly distraught. Barely aware of your presence, his despairing eyes scanning his surroundings without restraint. You have to grab him by the shoulders and shake him back to his senses. Forgive me, he says sobbing. I'm looking for my sister, Sarah. She was with me, but we got separated in the fog. Ah, this damn weather, Sarah. You shush him and promise to help him find, uh, find her. His face lights up. Thank you very much, thank you. There is an abandoned church where we used to play as children. Maybe she took shelter there. We are about to ask him where it is, but the crash of thunder brings terror back into his eyes and the man vanishes into the woods before you can stop him. Activate too. Um, this forest in like in November, rainy weather evening is overcrowded. Mm, uh, activate now, activate. Uh, Mm -mm. What was the 10? Activate... Mm, not 10, 27. Mm -mm. 2. Let's activate 2. And 2 is... The Lost Sister. Okay, it's a mission. So, let's place it over here. Let's place it over here. And uh, I need to exhaust one of my symbols, which I will. Uh, action tokens. And I will simply discard this card. Discard this card and read seven. Oops. <coughs> seven. So. From the ruins of the church come the muffled sobs of a young girl. It's Sarah. Telling her that her brother is still missing is an ungrateful task. She tells you that she and Ludwig 
who are Chargians returning from a visit to seek factors. When you offer to protect her and help reunite with him, the young woman's gaze is filled with new hope and determination. Activate three. Activate card number three. Okay. Oh, companion. So, we got Sarah Torhuter. She's a companion. Uh, at the end of a turn, you can choose an active character on this companion style. If you do that, character gains one health. Very nice. So, I will place her somewhere over here. I need her token as well. I need her token as well. And she has two move actions and no combat. <laughs> okay, active character on that tile. Mm hmm to gain one health. Very helpful at the moment. I could... No, I cannot explore more. So, that's it. So, that's it. Um, so, first isolated cultist and his opportunity attack. Oh, it's a miss. It's a miss again. It's a miss against Beatrice. Ah, oh, she's the best uh, fighter in the team. So, um, at the end of the turn, this enemy places himself on a adjacent tile without a character. So, I can place him anywhere. I will place him here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now, and now, uh, what do we have? We need to remove one time token, two turns left, uh, time token, and of course refresh all of our cards and action tokens. Mm -hmm. So before I... Uh, uh, when I still remember, I will use my medication token to get to the full health. Uh, and now, and now, what shall we do? Definitely we need to chase this guy. Mm, and Agnes is up for the task. She will go here. She can either fight, yeah, she will fight twice. She will fight twice. Her health is full. So she will fight twice, I guess. But we'll see. Okay, so. So. Miss and Miss. She is filling up her focus, though. Okay, with full focus, she will perform her special ability uh, for full for 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 focus she will inflict other damage like a plain damage she can use two of her uh oh, actually she cannot use two of her symbols because she already used one ah damn it okay but i forgot that when she's entering that dude's territory um there is an opportunity attack which is a hit okay now we are uh, back on track and and she will fight again. She will fight again. Now it seems it's better. It's better. Uh, is he a little? No, he's not. So uh, she defended herself and she managed to get one focus for that attack and one, uh, and she inflicted another damage. Two left. Ding dong. Okay. Meanwhile, Beatrice, what shall Beatrice do? Well, Beatrice will simply follow. She will... Oh, but she is only left at one health. Ah, it doesn't matter. She will follow. Um, she will follow and fight. And fight with use of these two symbols. So... Beatrice. Combat time. Okay. Oh, miss, 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 miss. Plenty of misses, but Beatrice has this the skill. Uh, I can roll that fate die. Uh, triangle is actually a miss for me. So, oh no. Mm. So that's it. Well, it was a miss. I can attack again. I can and I will. Uh, 
I can and I will. So, whew, okay, my focus is replenished, which is nice. It should be replenished before even. But she got a hit. Bam! She's down. Knocked out cold. Okay, it is what it is. Mm -mm -mm. That girl, Sarah there, should... Uh, should uh, heal one wound from any of the characters and she will heal Valerio. Valerio. So, Melchiore will uh, do exploration expecting the worst okay so let's see what that is of course it's a weird crow it's a weird crow uh, so two over here two to one nothing too fancy no trades actually no trades uh, so mm -mm -mm. No trades. So, oh, I didn't take that one. So, because this is, uh, we have two rounds left. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> Valerio will attack, or even Cesare. Mm, Cesare. Okay, let Cesare attack. Let's see if our mighty dog can deal with that um, crow. No. The first attack didn't went well. The second attack... Actually, second attack did went pretty good. Uh, one damage token. We need one more. So Valerio will step into the action and uh, get rid of that as well. And I should have placed a token over here. Okay, Valerio is attacking with the use of star symbol oh what a nice attack so this goes up to the full mm, value up to the full value and we have dealt other damage to that crow so crow is off i get a single reward so let's see what I can draw. Maybe that one. Oh, three talers. Nice. Nice. That's a nice reward. That's a really nice reward. Hmm. Okay, Valerio, you explore. Let's explore. Another weird crow. Another weird crowd, this one with a special ability. At the end of the turn, this name places itself on the title where the character with the least available health is located and it's a nice reward out there. So, um, we want you to step in to this crowd city. This changes into two. Mm -hmm. Can I kill him like instantly? Mm, I mean, kill the crowd instantly, not really. Not really, I don't have... Uh, I can't do sneak attack without any additional equipment. So I will simply fight. I will simply fight. So let's see. <laughs> Another nice one. So... It's a damage. It's one damage. And we need three. <laughs> I cannot fight with you, but I can donate you a stone skin and then Melchiore can fight um, uh, against crowds. So Melchiore first, let's see if Melchiore is lucky. Actually, he is. So uh, we get one focus because I'm choosing the upper result over here and two focus because I'm choosing the uh, bottom result over over here and that's enough that's enough to deal another damage that's enough to deal another damage <laughs> okay and once more once more so another star symbol 
Okay, I didn't defend myself. I inflicted wound, but I didn't defend myself. But I will use stone skin to produce me two shields. And that's it. That's it. He is gone, right? Right. Okay, so Weird Crow is gone. And I will I will draw two two gifts. Two gifts from Daddy Dude. So the first one will be that one. Okay, stone skin. This is useful. Very useful. And I will draw that one. Um, Master Brew. Also useful for attacks. Cool. Nice and easy. Mm, and I will <laughs> I will walk over here. This this style is already explored, so I don't have nothing else to do over here. I will walk there. And does it conclude my round? We get to the final round? Yes, we do. So so, so, I will get rid of that cube. We are in the final round. We have one track collected. Um, uh, our Beatrice over there will rise from the ashes. <laughs> She's back. Okay. Uh, but before she do, actually, that dude will try to uh, hit Agnes. He managed to do that. He managed to do that. So now she's rising uh, and he's moving to adjacent tile without anyone. I'm gonna place him here conveniently. Mm. So let's refresh all the cards and all, all the tokens. All the cards and all the tokens. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's hunt the cultist. It will be pr really simple. One for a move, opportunity attack from cultist, it's a hit, okay. But I'm using Agnes special skill, um, two moon symbols and she can perform a sneak attack. Sneak attack value is two and I needed two damage. So that dude is gone and he's, um, he's cold. And the reward for that dude is chapter excerpt 10. Certain. Okay, the cultist is expectantly reluctant to talk, but the application of inquisition-tested methods soon loses his tongue. Hmm, I wonder what that is, and reveals to you where his companions are headed. Getting what you wanted, you tie him to a tree. His fate is in God's hands. Oh man, we showed some mercy. We get one track, so it's the second track for the team. We have two right now, which I suppose is good. And yeah, that's it. Let's get rid of that miniature. Agnes is done. That's it uh, for her when it comes to that particular um, game. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Well, I mean, okay, so let's say Valerio over here will perform exploration. Exploration, another weird crow. Another weird crow. So you step in. Okay, no trades, so it's just a matter of combat right now. Oh, I will explore with Sun Symbol, of course, because I need those to fight. Oh, it doesn't matter. Okay, so fight. Fight. Uh, hmm. Let's see how it goes. Ah, it went okay. It went okay. I've managed to deal one damage I've managed to do one damage okay and one focus but it doesn't give me anything I'm my focus is full so again again let's try again okay so it's a damage for damage so more or less Valerio is knocked down but the crow is gone Oh, it was at one health, excuse me. So Valeria is not down. I didn't see, I, I was expecting someone strong, something stronger. So it was already down. So I, I don't need to do that. I will simply get a reward, which is two dollars. Valerio is a rich guy. Okay. Rich guy. Mm -hmm. And, 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 oh, I should have placed 
this token over here. And so with two actions, Valerio can explore more, and he will. So let's turn it over and let's get to our another crow. So it's a weird crow. Mm -hmm. Three, uh, two, two, one. Three talers if defeated, but I cannot defeat this dude. Um, I don't have any actions left. Maybe Melchiore will help. So let's see. Let's see. Melchiore will move. First of all, Cesare will move here. Then Melchiore will move there as well. And it's time to have some fun. So, Cesare will start. Mm -hmm. Fight. Okay, 1-1. One, one. one damage dealt, one received. And I think Melchiore will finish that. Because I don't want to risk losing dog and, uh, and suffering one damage. So, Melchiore will finish that. So, I'm firing up my uh, Master Brew. Oh, maybe I will see the result and then. Okay, so. Mm -mm. So, it's like that and like that. So, I've defended myself and dealt damage, as you can see. Uh, second damage. The crow is the crow is gone. The crow is gone, and mm -mm, and what was the reward for that? Uh, three dollars. Okay. Okay. And basically, this concludes the entire scenario. So now let's read the outcomes. So, uh, we were here, if time, runs, uh, if time runs out and the party has at least one track, we have to read page 7, so let's see that. Although, although it is not your first encounter with the demonic and supernatural beings, your mind has been tested. Monsters like the ones you encountered in this woods would not even come out of your worst nightmares. But they are likely to populate your dreams in the future. The relentless rain and the freezing cold are a strain on your weary limbs, but they also help keep you grounded in reality. You must resist the temptation to light a fire and rest until morning. The trail you have found will not be visible for long in this weather. You allow yourself for only, uh, only a few minutes to catch your breath before returning to your hunt. Cosma the Gubernatis is near. Okay, so we're gonna rest for a while and then we're gonna move forward. Of course, if you know, it will be the full campaign. And now we're gonna, we're gonna get to the upkeep uh, part of the game. So in the upkeep, we can perform upkeep operations. Each character advances level by one and gets two gifts. Gifts, I call them gifts, but yeah, you know, two bonuses. So, for example, in that case, that would be something that I have drawn. Uh, equipment card and Feline uh, Grace uh, potion. Uh, and I would advance, uh, I would advance uh, my level so, I was on the second level, for example, but now I would advance to the third level. And you can compare that. More health. Um, cards are the same for that particular character, but it's different for each of the characters. And another action symbol. So, our characters will get stronger. And as there are only seven levels, you will see, uh, you will see progress with each of the scenario, which is something that I love. Uh, okay, so that's the one thing. Mm, next. And of course, you will do that for each of the characters. I'm not going to do it right now, um, but we're gonna do, we will do that for all the characters. If the party has at least two tracks, each character gets another potion of your choice. Awesome. Um, so this is a reward if we got more than one um, track cube. Okay, now we're gonna create a market with five cards. And this is really interesting. Mm, because equipment is so strong is in this game. So, five cards. One, two, three, four, five. And market. 
and in the market we have five different five different um, equipment equipment actually and for example you get some uh, when you get X you get to reroll one of your dice or you can reroll fade die or for example uh, perform a sneak attack or add something to your die so there is a plenty there's plenty of ways to influence combat influence the situation on the on the board which i which i love and what was really interesting about about my previous game and this game of requiem downfall of magic is that uh, when i played before on the second turn I got a market. There was an event uh, uh, in the book and I found a market and I created a market like right in the second turn and well, I got access to, you know, some uh, amazing, amazing um, equipment. So uh, right now we would be able to buy any of this. That's of course is the price of each of these. We got some gold, so definitely we would um, prepare better for the next, um, for the next uh, chapter, for the next chapter. And uh, we can perform as many uh, uh, exploit actions as we wish. Exploit actions are the actions that allows us to train new skill cards or replace skill cards, buy something from the market or buy medication from the market. So that's that. I will place these five cards over here. That's the market we've created. Mm -hmm. And also, and also, uh, so I can buy any of these or pay five to buy a random card. And why is it important? Well, because you may, for example, get cards like this. Restore to tokens. I mean, come on. Uh, you know, everything I found in this game was really useful. Was really useful. So each of the equipment pieces, not only they look great, but they give you some nice abilities like for example gain health or gain to uh, medications so yeah this is uh, th this is nice because sometimes there is equipment in the games it's not that much useful and this is uh, really good and what else i can tell you well there was other ending there was other ending so there was also a bad ending you didn't manage to get any of the track cubes and you would read something, uh, other outcome, but still the story progresses, which I love because I know how about you, but in my adult life, I don't have time to replace uh, to replay scenarios that I have lost. I would rather get less, learn, evolve, get better and get to next scenario because I don't want to replay scenarios. So we don't do that in this game. We're gonna simply advance. Mm, doesn't matter the result of the scenario. And what else I can tell you? Well, uh, these two games were completely different than I played. The one that I'm showing you right now and the previous one that I have played before. And it's a great because replayability value is definitely there. So um, there were monsters I have seen in this uh, in this game that I have not seen before and, and vice versa. And also, okay, let me show you something. It's a little... Uh, spoiler, I need to take this book. <laughs> so, for example, I know how to get to event 30, doesn't matter, but what, I, what I'm interested in, is, uh, what, I'm, uh, what I am interested in is um, get prestigious Archibus. So, this is a treasure, like a higher level of equipment, and look at that. If you would go there, get there, you would get this stuff, five, four dice, uh, four cubes, um, inflict one plane damage. Very powerful, very powerful. Um, and there was a moment in the game that I didn't have health, if I remember correctly, to pull this coal from the cave or whatever, and I guess I would get that treasure. But I didn't, on both of the games. So, as you can see, um, as you can see, there is plenty of, uh, plenty of branching out micro stories, side quests, uh, that you're gonna find or not when playing this game. So I played twice and I basically played two different games. Mm, okay, mm, I think that's it. I think Ludus Magnus Studio did a pretty good job with this adventure game. Actually amazing job because I had fun. I hope you had fun. 
too. And if you like, um, if you like my video and would like to be taken to another adventure, not necessarily in Nova Eta's world, but in any other world, then how about um, maybe consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, folks, and have an amazing day. Bye-bye.